darkness of for decades, humans have continuously explored the world they live in, seeking to know its origins, what works and why it does. New research has shown that the solar system as we know it has a giant bubble wrapped around it, shocking many scientists. What is the solar system? Why is there a bubble wrapped around it? What does this mean for science? Join us in this video as we show how scientists discovered a bubble around our solar system. We live on a planet that is one of the many billions of objects in our solar system. Compared to the rest of the solar system and our Milky Way, at large, we more or less live on a speck of dust. That is how infinitesimally small we are compared to the corner of the universe we call home. Our solar system is a vast and complex arrangement of celestial objects centered around the sun. To understand our solar system and how it functions in space, we need to understand its components and their positions relative to one another. There are six main components in our solar system that determine all the activities humans have witnessed in the past millions and billions of years. These are the sun, the planets, dwarf planets and asteroids, the many moons attached to the planets, comets and Kuiper belt objects, and the Oort cloud. At the centre of our solar system is the Sun, a luminous, nearly perfect sphere of hot plasma, primarily composed of hydrogen and helium. This massive star, which is one of the many billions in the universe, has a diameter of about 870,000 miles. This means it is about 109 times larger than Earth. Through a process called nuclear fusion that occurs in its core, the Sun generates a large amount of energy. In this process, hydrogen atoms fuse to form helium, releasing vast amounts of heat and light in the process. This energy production sustains the Sun's intense brightness and warmth, providing the necessary conditions for life on Earth. Also, the Sun's surface temperature is about 5500 degrees Celsius, while its core temperature reaches millions of degrees. And while it might look dormant and quiet, hundreds of activities, such as sunspots, solar flares and coronal mass ejections, occur on the Sun due to its magnetic field interacting with its hot, turbulent plasma. It is also the central and largest celestial body in our solar system, responsible for almost 99% of our solar system's total mass. According to scientists, the Sun's gravitational pull keeps our solar system's planets, moons, asteroids and comets in orbit around it. As a middle-aged star, the Sun has been shining for about 4.6 billion years and is expected to continue giving light, warmth and life for several billion more years. Planets are also included in our solar system. Planets are celestial bodies that orbit around stars like our Sun. They do not produce their own light, but instead reflect the light they receive from the star they orbit. The planets in our solar system are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. These planets can be categorized into two main groups based on their characteristics and composition. The first group is terrestrial planets or inner planets. These are planets like Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars that have solid surfaces. Also called rocky planets, they are also relatively smaller in size compared to the gas giants. These planets are primarily composed of rock and metal and have thin atmospheres except Earth and diverse surface features such as craters, mountains, valleys and plains. The second group is made up of gas giants or the outer planets. This group includes Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. These planets have thick atmospheres, internal layers of gas and liquid and distinct ring systems. They also host numerous moons of various sizes. These larger planets are mainly composed of hydrogen and helium, with denser atmospheres and no solid surfaces. Another essential component of our solar system is dwarf planets and asteroids. Dwarf planets are celestial bodies that orbit the Sun, but haven't cleared their orbits of other debris. While they share similarities with planets, scientists have determined that they have not met the criteria to be classified as such. These bodies have varying sizes, shapes and compositions. They also exist in various regions of the solar system. 
Pluto and Eris are located in the Kuiper Belt beyond Neptune, while Ceres resides in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. On the other hand, asteroids are rocky remnants from the early formation of the solar system, primarily found in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. They also vary in size and orbit the Sun, ranging from small rocky fragments to larger bodies like Ceres, which is also classified as a dwarf planet. These celestial objects differ from planets due to their smaller sizes, irregular shapes and diverse compositions, consisting mainly of rocky and metallic materials. The fourth critical component of our solar system is moons. Moons are natural satellites that orbit planets and dwarf planets within our solar system. These celestial bodies vary in size, composition and characteristics. They range from small, irregularly shaped objects to larger bodies with complex surface features and unique geological activities. Scientists classify moons based on their size, formation and relationship with their parent bodies. Some of them, like Earth's moon, are relatively large and have played important roles in shaping their parent planet's gravitational forces and orbital dynamics. These larger moons often possess distinct surface features, such as craters, mountains, valleys and, in some cases, atmospheres. However, smaller moons, which are often irregularly shaped, might lack significant geological activity but still play essential roles in the gravitational interactions within their planetary systems. Moons can be captured asteroids or comets, formed through accretion processes or created via collisions with their parent bodies. Many moons exhibit unique properties, such as volcanic activity, subsurface oceans or thick atmospheres. These characteristics make moons intriguing objects for scientific exploration and research, offering insights into planetary evolution, potential habitability and the diversity of celestial bodies within our solar system. Other vital components of our solar system are comets and Kuiper Belt objects. These are icy bodies found in the outer regions of our solar system, each contributing to our understanding of its formation and evolution. Comets are celestial objects primarily composed of ice, dust, rock and organic compounds. They possess highly elliptical orbits that take them from the distant reaches of the solar system to closer proximity to the Sun. When heated by the Sun's radiation, comets develop a glowing tail made of gas and dust, creating a spectacular display visible from Earth. Scientists believe that comets are remnants from the early solar system, carrying preserved materials from that time and providing valuable insights into its formation. On the other hand, Kuiper Belt objects are icy bodies situated beyond Neptune in the Kuiper Belt, a region similar to the asteroid belt but containing icy objects. Kuiper Belt objects, such as Pluto and Eris, are composed of frozen volatiles like methane, ammonia and water ice. They offer scientists a glimpse into the primordial material that formed the outer solar system and contribute to our understanding of its composition and history. The last component is the Oort cloud. According to scientists, the Oort cloud is a theoretical and extremely distant region surrounding our solar system. It is believed to be the source of very old comets that occasionally enter the inner solar system. Named after Dutch astronomer Jan Oort, this hypothetical sphere of icy bodies and comets is situated far beyond the Kuiper Belt, extending thousands to potentially tens of thousands of astronomical units from the Sun. This vast and largely unexplored region is thought to contain trillions of icy objects, remnants from the formation of the solar system. These icy bodies, sometimes referred to as Oort cloud objects, are composed of volatile substances like water, methane and ammonia, frozen in the extreme cold of space. The gravitational influence of passing stars or galactic tides may occasionally disturb these icy bodies, causing some to be flung inward toward the inner solar system as comets. These comets, characterized by their elongated orbits, can take hundreds or even thousands of years to complete a single orbit around the Sun.
While the existence of the Oort cloud is supported by mathematical models and observations of cometary behaviour, direct observation and exploration of this distant region has been near impossible due to its distance from Earth and the limitations of our current telescopes. Although there has been an immense upgrade in the powers of our telescopes, it is still very hard to get exact observations from Earth, which is millions of miles away from any other celestial bodies. This distance is why many space agencies develop and launch spacecraft into deep space for observation and exploration. Two of the most iconic spacecraft launched by any space agency are the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, which were deployed by NASA as part of the Voyager program in the late 1970s to explore the outer solar system. Voyager 1 was launched on September 5, 1977 while Voyager 2 was launched on August 20th, 1977. Despite its name, Voyager 2 was launched before Voyager 1 due to its trajectory to explore multiple planets. The primary objective of the Voyager missions was to conduct close-up investigations of Jupiter and Saturn and their moons, rings and magnetic fields. Voyager 2's trajectory allowed it to continue to Uranus and Neptune, providing the first and only visits to these planets to date. Both spacecraft also carried a suite of scientific instruments, including cameras, spectrometers, magnetometers, and particle detectors designed to study various aspects of the planets, moons, rings, and interstellar space. Voyager 1 made its first encounter with a planet in March 1979 as it conducted its closest approach to Jupiter. Here, it captured detailed images and data of the giant planet and its moons, notably revealing the complex structure of Jupiter's atmosphere and its moon's characteristics. It also discovered volcanic activity on Jupiter's moon Io, identifying it as the most volcanically active body in the solar system. Apart from this, it captured the intricate structure of Jupiter's cloud patterns, the Great Red Spot, and its magnetic field. Moving on from Jupiter to Saturn, Voyager 1 discovered new moons and provided close-up images of Saturn's rings, revealing their complex structure with gaps and divisions. It also examined Saturn's largest moon, Titan, identifying it as the only moon in the solar system with a dense atmosphere. As part of its mission, it also observed and studied Saturn's magnetosphere and auroras. From there on, it moved through space until 2012, when it became the first human-made object to enter interstellar space, crossing the boundary known as the heliopause. Today, it continues to transmit data on cosmic rays and magnetic fields in interstellar space, providing insights into the region beyond the influence of the Sun's magnetic field. On the other hand, Voyager 2 made its closest approach to Jupiter in July 1979, then continued to Saturn, conducting a flyby in August 1981. It also provided additional observations of Saturn's rings, moons like Titan, and the planet's atmosphere, complementing Voyager 1's findings. It also examined Jupiter's atmosphere, capturing detailed images of cloud patterns and storms. In January 1986, it conducted the first close-up examination of Uranus, discovering new rings and previously unseen moons. It also studied Uranus's atmosphere, revealing its composition and temperature variations. Three years later, it visited Neptune, providing the first close-up images and data of Neptune, its rings, and its largest moon, Triton. It discovered geysers erupting nitrogen gas on Triton and studied its unique retrograde orbit. As part of their mission, both voyagers were equipped with a golden record, containing sounds and images representing Earth and humanity. This was intended as a message to any potential extraterrestrial life forms the spacecraft might encounter in interstellar space. Currently, both spacecraft are in interstellar space beyond the influence of the Sun's magnetic field and they continue to transmit valuable scientific information about the interstellar environment and cosmic rays back to Earth. Part of this valuable information is the recent observation of what scientists call the local bubble, which is a cosmic bubble that surrounds our solar system. According to reports, for the first time, 
researchers have studied a series of events beginning 14 million years ago that caused a still expanding cosmic bubble to envelop Earth's galactic neighborhood, forming all the nearby stars. This local bubble is a wide expanse stretching 1,000 light years wide. According to Dennis Chow, within 500 light years of Earth, all stars and star forming regions sit on the surface of the local bubble but not inside it, giving clues to why Earth sits in a part of the Milky Way galaxy that is mostly empty. While scientists have suspected the giant bubble's existence for decades, it is only recently that they can observe the net, its shape, and how far it reaches. The local bubble, or local cavity as it is sometimes called, is a relative cavity in the interstellar medium of the Orion Arm in the Milky Way. According to scientists, it contains the closest celestial neighbours. It holds the local interstellar cloud, which contains the solar system, the neighbouring G cloud, the Ursa Major Moving Group, which is the closest stellar moving group, and the Hyades, which is the nearest open cluster. The local bubble, which is filled with exceptionally sparse gas, was formed from a series of supernovae or powerful explosions that take place when stars collapse at the end of their lifespan. These explosions occurred near the void centre and blasted gas across space within the past 10 to 20 million years. The shockwave gathered clouds of gas and dust into a thick, frigid, hollow shell that formed the surface of the local bubble, explains Catherine Zucker, the study's lead author and astronomer at the Center for Astrophysics. The resulting clouds of gas and dust provided enough fuel for star-forming regions on the bubble's surface. Earlier, Geminga, a pulsar in the constellation Gemini, was once thought to be the remnant of a single supernova that created the local bubble. But now, multiple supernovae in subgroup B, one of the Pleiades moving group, are thought to have been responsible, becoming a remnant supershell. Using data visualization software, the team was able to map the asymmetrical bubble, leading to the creation of 3D maps of the local bubble's celestial material. According to astronomers, the local bubble is not spherical. Instead, it seems narrower in the galactic plane, becoming somewhat egg-shaped or elliptical and may widen above and below the galactic plane, becoming shaped like an hourglass. It also sits adjacent to other bubbles of less dense interstellar medium, including, in particular, the Loop I bubble. The Loop I bubble was cleared, heated and maintained by supernovae and stellar winds in the Scorpius Centaurus Association, some 500 light years from the Sun. The Loop I bubble contains the star Antares, also known as Alpha Scorpi. It has been found that several tunnels connect the cavities of the local bubble with the Loop I bubble, called the Lupus Tunnel. Other bubbles adjacent to the local bubble are the Loop II bubble and the Loop III bubble. In a shocking and surprising turn of events, in 2019, researchers found interstellar iron in Antarctica related to the local interstellar cloud, which might be related to the formation of the local bubble. According to data collected by Gaia, a space-based observatory belonging to the European Space Agency, when the bubble first formed, it moved at about 60 miles per second. As the bubble expands, it sweeps interstellar gas and dust, which collapse to form new stars on its surface, but not inside. However, the bubble is currently expanding at four miles per second. Astronomers suspect that the solar system is situated in the middle of the bubble because it is much older than 14 million years. In a statement made by Joao Alves, a University of Vienna astrophysicist, when the first supernovae went off that created the local bubble, the sun was far away from it. But about five million years ago, the sun crossed into the local bubble, where it currently sits near the middle. When the local bubble first started forming, the Earth was over 1,000 light years away. But the Earth entered the bubble about five million years ago. According to scientists, this is consistent with estimates of radioactive iron isotope deposits from supernovas in the Earth's crust from other studies. Researchers suggest that more star-forming bubbles are likely common throughout the Milky Way. 
Study author and astronomer Alyssa Goodman, who founded GLU, the data visualization software that helped piece together the study's maps, explained in a statement that statistically, the sun wouldn't be near the middle of a vast bubble if they were not common throughout the galaxy. According to Catherine Zucker, the local bubble is just the one that we happen to be inside of at the moment. We think that the sun in its history has likely passed through many, many super bubbles. The team plans to map more cosmic bubbles for a full 3D view of their shapes, locations and sizes. By charting where the bubbles lay in the vast expanse of space, astronomers can piece together how these bubbles act like nurseries for stars, how the bubbles interact with each other and how galaxies like the Milky Way evolved. While all this is going on, you might be tempted to think it's all a waste of time, energy and resources. But wouldn't you want to know what's going on in your neighbourhood? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.